widowhood racing has been a popular practice for nearly 80 years or more. During a trip to Belgium a few years ago, I watched a film from the 1930s that showcased racing widowhood at the World's Fair. It was strikingly similar to the way we currently race, right down to the design of the nest fronts. There was a misconception that widowhood remained a well-kept secret until the 1950s. Racing with straight widowhood, which involves only racing male pigeons, cocks, is considered the easiest and most efficient way to compete. Other systems tend to favor female pigeons, hens, while widowhood places the advantage on the cocks. When racing older birds, it is necessary to adopt a specific system. In fact, any system is more favorable than the natural system. In the past five years leading up to 2015, we raced celibate hens. Surprisingly, the celibate hens performed better than the widow cocks. Nowadays, we practice both systems, but personally, I have a preference for the hens. Many pigeon fanciers claim that their hens excel, which is why they choose not to switch to widowhood. The natural system, celibacy, and double widowhood all favor the hens. The key point is that if you race using a system that favors the hens, they will likely be your top performers. On the other hand, straight widowhood favors the cocks. I have often stated that I could condense everything one needs to know about widowhood on a single page, and the following article accomplishes just that. The number one question and dilemma is whether one should pair the cocks, allow them to raise babies, or simply lay eggs with no young. Here is my answer, it doesn't really matter. Here's what I do. My cocks only encounter the hens on the night of the first race, just before they are crated. I keep it simple. I use stock hens and extra unbroken hens for the cocks. By avoiding mating and raising young, I can keep the cocks lean, making them more agile in evading hawks. They don't waste energy on rearing offspring or pursuing hens. As for molting, by the last race, my cocks usually drop one or perhaps two flights, so feather quality isn't a problem. Now, let's simplify the widowhood system. In the first few races, the cocks spend 30 minutes with the hens before being crated for the race. After a short race, they are left with the hens for two hours, and for a long race, it could be overnight. However, the timing is not critical. From week three onward, simply open the nest boxes for 15 minutes before crating for the race. Remove the non-racing cocks before the hens are introduced. In the morning, either release the non-racing cocks to the hens or return them to the loft after the hens have been removed for the day. The day before shipping, Thursday in my case, for a short distance race is the day to feed for the race. If the shipping is on Friday, allow them to eat as much as they want from a mixture of 20% barley, 70% European mix, and 10% safflower slash hemp slash flax seed. On the day of shipping for a short race, Friday, feed each bird 3 quarters ounce of European mix in the morning and 1 quarter ounce of safflower slash hemp slash flax seed around 1 p.m. Avoid feeding too late in the afternoon to prevent dehydration. Always provide fresh water with no additives on the day of shipping. Give the pigeons a warm bath about 1 hour after the 1 p.m. feeding on the day of shipping. This bath helps them relax, stay calm throughout the night in the truck, and brings them into form. However, skip the bath if rain is predicted. For short distance races, feed a mixture of half European mix and half depurative mix on the day of their return to help replenish their reserves. From Sunday to Wednesday, feed them 100% depurative, and on Thursday morning, feed a mixture of 75% depurative and 25% European mix. Follow the Thursday afternoon feeding instructions mentioned earlier. On the day of their return, provide one gallon of water with one tablespoon of glucose, one quarter teaspoon of vitamins and electrolytes, any brand made for chickens will do, one quarter teaspoon of iodized salt, and include a friendly bacteria supplement. For long distance races of 400 miles and above, feed the birds a 50% depurative and 50% European mix from Saturday to Tuesday, feeding them in the mornings and evenings. On Wednesday and Thursday, the day of shipping, Feed them a mixture of 50% European mix and 50% safflower, hemp, rape, and flax mix. Allow them to eat as much as they want and remove the extra feed. Provide vitamins and electrolytes on Wednesday and fresh, clear water on Thursday. The pigeons should receive vitamins and electrolytes on the day of their return and the day before shipping. Throughout the season, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, mix in half to one tablespoon of flaxseed oil, purchased at a health food store, with a grain, and add brewer's yeast, Belgium pink minerals, natural or vanilla flavored whey protein, and 1 8 teaspoon of iodized salt. Grit should be available to the pigeons at all times, along with small pots of Belgium pink minerals, brown mineral blocks, oyster shells, and mixed commercial grit. If performance starts to decline mid-season, allow the cocks to spend the night with the hens. The following week, introduce the hens to the loft 24 hours before shipping. 
place nesting bowls and nesting material in the loft. Once the cocks return from the race, let them spend the night with the hens again. Afterward, revert to regular widowhood, and they will regain their form and mental readiness. Keep introducing changes to keep the pigeons fresh. In week 3, introduce only one exceptional hen before shipping. In week 4, provide nesting bowls for the first time. In week 5, do nothing, just crate and ship. In week 6, introduce a strange cock to the widow loft for one hour before shipping. In week 7, bring in the hens 24 hours before, as mentioned earlier. Always ensure well-fed hens are waiting for the cocks to return from the race. Keep the hens on wire and prevent them from mating. Feed them a rich European mix on the day they will see the cocks. You want to avoid the hens thinking about eating when the cocks come home. Feed the widow hens barley five days per week, keeping them slightly hungry. Treat the hens with the same medications and schedule as the cocks to avoid reinfection. If the hens do mate, do not use them for the cocks. A non-mated hen or one not shared is better than a mated hen. Introduce separated stock hens to add some excitement. Yearling hens are also preferred, as they mate less frequently. From 300 miles onward, ship the cocks every other week. Use your judgment based on their behavior. If they are in great form, consider pooling them. For training, allow the cocks to free exercise for an hour four to five mornings and two or more evenings per week. If needed, give a toss to cocks that did not race on the day of the race. For the first month of the race season, perform one long toss, 70 miles, midweek. If the pigeons have raced 300 miles or above, they can go two weeks without racing or tossing. They will find what they need around the loft. Avoid having the hens waiting when the cocks return from a midweek toss, as seeing the hens too frequently can cause a loss of form. Maintain a calm environment. Avoid entering the loft while the birds are resting. All loft chores should be done while they are out exercising. Widowers should focus on eating, exercising, and resting. Minimize disturbances, and ensure the loft is comfortable, warm, and lacks open areas that might cause the birds to fear something outside. Close the loft on cold or rainy days to keep moisture out and maintain dryness. Implement a sound health program. Administer canker and respiratory medications every other week on Sunday afternoon, Monday, and Tuesday. Rotate between different drugs during each cycle. For canker, consider using Flagyl, Ridsol, and Imtral, while for respiratory issues, rotate Suenovil and Doxycycline. Use Baycox for coccidiosis if necessary, especially during extended periods of dampness and rain. Worm the birds around week 6 or 7. Using different drugs during each cycle helps prevent the pigeons from developing resistance to the medication. These are the key points summarized from the article you provided. It outlines a widowhood racing system for pigeons and includes specific instructions regarding feeding, training, mating, health care, and managing the loft environment. There are many reasons to buy my racing pigeon method. Here are some of the best reasons. You will get excellent results, it's a very simple system to use, it's affordable, I have had over 400 first prize winners, it's adaptable to any situation. You can use it with any racing method, natural, widowhood, young birds, it's a very effective method. There is no need to spend a lot of money on fancy pigeon products, it's a reliable system and it is foolproof to use. Professional athletes, race horses, take the same products, there is science behind this not just hearsay, it is all to do with red blood cells and oxygen in the blood, without that a pigeon will not race well, or an athlete will not win a race, if he has low oxygen in his blood, the above is fact and is 100% science. There are a few things you can do to improve your chances of winning at racing pigeons. One of the most important things is to learn as much as you can about the sport. You'll need to know the different types of pigeons, how to train them, and how to race them. Another key factor is practice. You'll need to be able to fly your pigeons competently in order to win races. And, of course, you'll need to have the funds to invest in racing pigeons and other racing equipment. 